first way that I try to persist is by breaking things down into tiny little pieces. When my house is overwhelming me because I persistently have not cleaned it, instead of saying on Saturday I will spend eight hours cleaning the house, I do what I call 10 second tidies. They're not really 10 seconds, but I'll say something like, in the time that breakfast is in the microwave, I'm gonna clean as much of the dishes as I can. And then generally speaking, once I start, I'm happy enough to finish. But it's getting started that's hard. So I kind of trick myself by saying I just have to take a tiny, tiny step. Often I'll end up wanting to take a longer step. So that's one thing that I do, I break it down. With spiritual practice, which is something I think is really important in these times that we have persistence about, I will also break that down into very small steps. I am not a person who will sit and meditate for an hour, but if I commit myself that six times during the day, I'm going to stop and be still for two minutes and set a timer, I can do that. And that's what I've been doing lately. I've been taking two minutes stillness breaks six times during the day. And that makes it again into a game like, oh no, it's eight o'clock and I've only done it four times. I have to do it twice more before bedtime. Anything you can make into a game and break it down. I see people with their Fitbits, which I don't have, but I think again, that breaks it down. You have your little tracking device. You can see what you're doing. You can break it down for yourself. You can know I'll get these steps in then and those steps in then and it will add up to this. So breaking it down is tip number one. Tip number two is an accountability buddy. Now, some people are great at being accountable to themselves and I commend them. I tell myself it's that they're more introverted than I am. I don't really know what it is, but I do know for me, it really helps to tell someone else what I want to do persistently. So for instance, every morning now for about five years, my friend Sharon Welch and I have talked on the phone and we share what we care about and we share what we're doing. And when I listen to her doing a lot more than I am, I start to feel unaccountable to our shared values of trying to keep justice in the world. But mostly what I do with her isn't feel bad. Mostly what I do with her is remember who I am and what my own commitments to myself are. Because they're not commitments to her, they're commitments to myself, but she helps me to keep them. Whether it's going to a Weight Watchers meeting, a 12 step meeting, or going, how about this, to church. Making commitments to remember who we are making commitments to be places where people remind us of what we care about, what we say we care about, and what we really care about. That's tip number two. And number three, which every parent in the world knows this tip, and parenting books are, uh, some of them think it's fine, some of them really judge it, but I don't know a single parent who doesn't use this technique significantly as in life every single day bribery. I bribe myself to do things persistently. So after you have your moment of silence, then you can get up and get a drink of water. It can be that simple. It, it can be a very tiny reward, but still having that thing that you have to look forward to after you do something persistently that maybe you don't feel as much like doing. I think Lynn Unger would say this is when you give the dog the treat. But the treat really is the reward of them knowing they did the right thing. I don't think dogs care. My dog doesn't care about that. But anyway, maybe some dogs do. Um, but for me, <laughs> I do feel good and it is a reward to do the thing itself. But I also really, bribery works for me. I can talk myself into going to a scary doctor appointment if I promise myself that afterwards I can go to a great movie. I can talk myself into daily tiny practices by adding daily tiny rewards. As I said, a glass of water. Or I can bribe myself by saying, you know, I'll clean the house while I listen to my favorite song 
for just for four minutes, again, breaking it down, but I'll reward myself with the music even as I'm doing the task. So these three things, break it down into small manageable pieces, whether it's two minutes of silence instead of half an hour, whether you plan to build it out longer, however you do it, break it down into small pieces. Two, be accountable to someone. Join one of our Facebook groups and share your spiritual practice. Come to this meeting when we gather and type in what you've been doing. Whatever it is, find someone, your friend, your neighbor, somebody who cares, who will listen to you, who will help you to remember what you've said you'll do and who you say you are. And finally, when all else fails, bribery. Nothing to be ashamed of there. We deserve rewards, hey? We're persistent. Those little penguins get the reward of seeing their egg hatch, and obviously that is worth everything to them. They will trek for days in order to be able to do that through the sludge and the slush. And so what is your ultimate reward? What is it you really want? For me, when all is said and done, what I want with persistence isn't just to get those little things done every day that I say, well, what I want is to be aligned, my actions and my purpose in life to be aligned so that who I want to be and what I do are aligned and they're not in conflict with each other. Or I'm not saying I want to be one thing, but acting like something completely different. That's my ultimate reward. That's my ultimate bribery. That's my ultimate accountability. And even though it is made of tiny, tiny steps, as Thich Nhat Hanh said, our only true possessions are our actions. So even though it is made of tiny, tiny actions, one right after the other, those actions add up to who I am and the life that I live. And I persistently desire that to be a good, well-lived, fully-lived, love-filled life.